some people enjoy what I'm about to talk about. See, I got my deep voice on. Got my radio voice on right now. So you know what the topic's going to be? I'm going to put my feet up. Get the mic a little closer. Pour me up. Well, I already had me a little drink of Henny. Light me a little friendly smoke. And this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some of my sex stories. My past conquest, conquests. Let's talk about it. So pre-recorded and direct. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all a few stories. So what I did is I gave myself some talking points. So the first one is one of the most embarrassing. One of the most embarrassing sex stories of mine. All right, I got one. Here you go. So this was like years ago. I was in the street hard. Dig me? I rented a little room. And um, I kept seeing this chick. She walked with a limp. She from the little area where I was hustling at. She walked with a limp. She walked with a limp. You know what I'm saying? Little John walked with a limp. So I got to know her girlfriend, little skinny John. I got to know her girlfriend real cool. Then I got to know her. So me and her gets to hooking up. I mean, and it turns out that she was selling the pussy. I'm not downing those females that do that because we all on the block. You got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? Now, she ain't selling me no pussy. I don't buy pussy straight I mean I, re I really don't so um anyway she wasn't selling me no pussy but we got together and I sold her some tree and I said alright I'm gonna smoke you out for what you buy so she bought like $30 worth of weed from me so I gotta smoke her out 30 so for every dime she blow up I blow up a dime feel me every nick she put up going up to that 30 I put up a nick so it was there smoking halfway through we had 15 15 a piece she wants to get a little drinky. And we go buy some malt liquor at that. Some fucking malt liquor. That means we come back. At the time I wasn't drinking Henny, so we was on the malt liquor. I started getting nice. She started getting nice. I'm like, we like at like the 16, 17 a piece. Dig me? Like she done did her 17. Uh, I mean, we like, we... I'm, I might, might be a little off right now because I'm drinking, but we did. We did. We got like a bag of peace left. And somehow, I don't even remember what the talk was. Somehow it turns into sex. So we did. She takes off her shit. I take off half my shit because you know how that goes. I'm at her place now. We had left my place and went to her place because that's where the drinks was at. She had drinks there. Plus we stopped and bought some more Dutch's shit like that, you know. But anyway, I'm at her place. She locks the door. Lights is off. It's just a soft light in the room that we in. She rented a room. Door's locked up. All that good shit. Tile under the door or whatnot. So now we down to like the last bag. I'm thinking, all right. I ain't got no vibes on fucking her. I just was cool with it. I just was noticing it because she walked with a limp. Wasn't like a light thing. I just, I mean, she was all right. You know what I mean? But I just noticed her because she walked with a limp. She in the hood. She walked with a limp. So you know who the, you tend to know who those people is, you know what I'm saying? So now we get to getting into it. She starts giving me a little head. And um I'll brag on myself a little bit. I'm in doubt. I'm nicely length. I'm a nice length, you know what I'm saying? And I'm um, laying on my back. I'm feeling it, falling back. You know you so nice that when you put your head back, it feel like your head is going back a thousand times. I'm that nice. So now I'm enjoying it. She's trying to get me deep throat. And suddenly I hear, and I feel something real warm and wet all over me, like all over my dick, my balls, everything's running down into my ass crack. Sit up real fast, and I look the bitch and choke the self on my dick. Not no ego shit, this really happened to me. She choked the self on my dick, spit up a little bit. Yeah, ew, all over me, like all over me, I mean like, it's all over me, she apologizes, I gets up, go in the shower, cleans myself up, 
No, nah, nigga's ready to roll. She asked me to chill. She want to even it out. She buys twenty dollars more worth of weed from me. She not answering her phone now. Mind you, remember she sell pussy. So by the time we be smoking, this is the time of night she be making her money. She promises me to make it up to me. I say, all right, cool. I had one condom left, and I ain't even fucking on the last one. So I get up, put on a condom, and she gives me the meanest head I ever got. And I think that was the most, em- no, in fact, that wouldn't even be the most embarrassing. That would have been the messiest. I started with the most embarrassing, but that wasn't the most embarrassing because it wasn't embarrassing for me. That was the most messiest, one of the most messiest, if not the most messiest thing sex and kind of have a hat and that's a real story you can take that to the bank i'm saying now one of the most embarrassing i'm telling an embarrassing story now at this time i'm like 19 i'm in job corps my man see in job corps when you finish everything out there you get a chance to set up your life again they help you get an apartment they give you some money Help you get an apartment, find a little job, and whatnot, whatnot. So usually, if you go to Pittsburgh, a lot of the kids, they stay in Philly. I mean, they got a lot of kids from Philly. If you if you go to Pittsburgh and you're from Philly, a lot of the kids in Philly end up staying in Pittsburgh, at least for a while even. They give it a year or two and see what a whole new life is like. So that's the situation that my man's here. My man's now, he falls back, and he stays, he's in Pittsburgh for just about a year so. I'm on my weekend pass and I stay the night at his house, feel me? So while we there, we get to drinking and smoking. If I remember right, we supposed to have some females. No, no, no. He had a girlfriend. So he wasn't supposed to have some females come through. I was supposed to have a female come through because his girl was at work. So it's just me and him there now. This nigga cool as shit. This girl cool as shit. We all young. And this is, remember, the most embarrassing thing. You see how I'm reiterating how embarrassing it was. It was embarrassing to me, but I'm going to tell you the whole story anyway. Fuck you, you know, I'm a grown-ass man. I'm going to tell you the story. So anyway, we're in the living room there, and it gets to be about 2 in the morning. The girl's supposed to be on her way. Her sister or her cousin or whatever that's supposed to bring her, that bitch was at the club drinking. She gets to the crib at like 2. She tells her, give her like an hour to sleep. And she good to go. She gives her the hour. We talk on the phone for the whole hour. Now the hour is up. The bitch won't wake up. She's trying to wake up people's up. She won't wake up. Now, we done been there for like an hour talking all nasty. I done talk nasty to this girl all day. This is another chick from Job Corps. You know, we usually get together and do this type shit on the weekend. You pick who you like for the week or that month, whatever. You go on with them to the motel. But since my man had the hookup, boom, I save the motel money. I spend my money on weed. I got mad tree. I got drinks. I mean, I, I even had a little hard drink. At the time, it was Southern Comfort. I'm saying it wasn't a Hennessy for me yet. It was Southern Comfort. So I had some Southern Comfort. Waiting for the joint to come. I ain't even cracked the body yet. Boom, she can't make it now because she can't get her peoples up. I'm I'm something like $8 short of getting her to my house in a taxi. Or to my man's place in a taxi. Mind you, my man's girl's at work. She come home at like 8 in the morning. By now it's like 3 in the morning. She can't come. So while I'm there talking to her, I get a little frustrated. And at the time, I was really like, Rugged, I was raw. So I'm talking to her and I see she can't come. I'm on my vibe like, yo, I'm all at you later then. Oh, well, what's up? Why you hanging up? Fuck that, I'm out. You can't come. Like, we can talk for hours. I'm done. I'm out. So I hang up the phone. So I'm sitting there talking with my man for like just about 10 minutes before he say, yo, you got to go to the store. So I'm like, all right, cool. So he gets up and he goes to the store. The shorty calls me like just as his door closed, my phone rang. I answer is her. Don't feel like that. Come through. Give you some pussy. I'm going to even suck your dick this time. How you like. All that type of shit. I'm there. We talking. This shit is bubbling. Boom. Now she got to get off the phone. I don't remember why her phone might have been. I don't remember. She got to get off the phone. She gets off the phone now. So I'm there. Hard dick. Alone in my man's apartment. 
What do I do? I decide to jerk my dick. Yeah, peoples. I decide to jerk my dick. So pull my dick out. Give me some tissue. I'm on. I'm in there, getting it in. Phone ring again. I see the shorty call. I answer. She talks a little dirty to me. I tell her what I'm doing. She talks dirty. I'm in there. Boom. She gotta get off the phone again. So just as she get off, I'm already like, I'm in there. So I'm like, fuck it. It's almost like I forgot where the fuck I was at. Like real talk. So I'm in there now. I'm getting it in on myself. And I'm almost there. And suddenly I hear a voice, my man voice go, yo. Look up, my man standing right over top of me. I'm talking about like three feet away from here. Yo. I was so fucking embarrassed, yo. My man had a good fucking laugh. He laughed his fucking ass off. He goes to call his girl. He calls his girl, tells his girl. His girl laughs her ass off. Now, they laughing at me, but my man was 100, though. Charlotte, my man was 100. My man was like, look. It's my nigga from New York. His nigga, his nigga, his nigga's name was Shaolin at the time. We gave each other little pet names and job call. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even remember his real name. His name was Shaolin. So my nigga's like, look, I understand. I'm a dude. I get it. I wish you had did that in the bathroom so I had to see, though. And he's laughing again. So I'm embarrassed. Got my face down. But I tell him, look, you deserve to know the truth. So I tell him the whole scenario. When I do look up, he got a straight face. He going, no, I get that. That happens. Feel me? And he never says he's not going to tell anybody. His girl now comes home because I stayed at night. She comes home. They clown me a bit over a Dutch. They don't act funny on me or nothing. They just clown me laughing. Ha, ha. Coach, you being your dick type shit. Feel me? This girl's clowning me. This girl was like an out there girl. Her name was Nick Bag. And she was like out there girl. Like she say whatever the fuck out of her face. So Nick Bag all like, what's it good, nigga? She do busting up, nigga. Did you leave my floor wet, nigga? She clowning me. But they was cool about it, though. They was real cool about it. I go back to Job Corps. Nobody ever mentions it. It never comes up again. I see them. I hang with them even other times after that. It never, ever comes up again. But for me, that was the most embarrassing sex story I could tell you. All right? Now, one of the cleanest, I'm going to tell you the cleanest story. I remember this cleanest story because while I was telling you the, 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 the uh, most embarrassing story, I remember the cleanest story. So this this time, I'm like, I think I'm fresh out of high school. I must be about. No, I'm still in high school, but I'm in like the last year of high school, something like that. And it's this chicky that I was messing with, a little homely body, homebody girl, good girl. No hood type shit, no hood type shit. So I'm getting with her and I'm seeing that I could get it. It's going down. I get it. She with it. She one of them girls talking like, she's like, you know, them goody girls is talking like, I feel like today is the time that I want to do this. And I think that it's a good time because we could take our time. We ain't got to rush. Goody two shoes, she don't curse, you know what I mean? All A's kind of girl. I mean, I can remember her face, but I can't even remember her name. So I go over her house. She lived with her mom and her dad. Her mom and dad is gone. I guess they're at work, whatever. We're there by ourselves, but we got hours. I'm talking about like 10 hours. So we there, we chilling, we listen to music, we play with, I don't play PlayStation and Xbox, whatever the fuck, at that time. And um, we chill. Wasn't no weed smoking or nothing, but we get there now. We get to kissing, feeling on my dick, I'm feeling on her titties. And all right, it's going down now. So she pulls the panties down and powder comes out like poof. I'm talking about like that talcum powder, that baby powder comes out like poof. And she got that shit that smell like um, fucking uh, lilac. No, not lilac. Um, What's that purple? It always uses the purple color. Uh fucking uh i don't remember the scent but it smelled really good like coming off of her body too it smelled really good like pussy bubbling dig me you can smell the slight pussy smell and i mean the good pussy smell not that bad pussy smell but the good pussy smell next to the powder it matches her body she got a real light scent of perfume on her something really light smells all good and shit and i mean powder all over the place i get in there she's the softest wettest moistest get in there and I go in and she was just like you know what I'm saying just chill no whole lot of noise 
She hugged me all tight. And the whole time, I couldn't help but to remember that this girl smelled ex so, she smelled so good. She smelled so clean. I had touched the pussy and put my hand up and did the smell test behind her head and everything just was just a go. She just smelled so clean. And that was just a, such a big turn on that I just kept busting. I think I must have busted like three times and I just bust quick like, uh. I'm just in that pussy just bust like, uh. She was just so clean. The third time I was just like, uh. And after the third time, she still smelled good. She was still smelling good. Like the cleanest pussy ever. She still smelled good. So, all right, we there, we lay down, catch a little sleep, my alarm. Well, no, her alarm goes off, we get up. I'm like, I got to leave. I'm leaving like two, three hours before our people get there to make sure everything is level, everything is good, you feel me? I ain't got no time to shrink, but I want to make sure she good. Get up, take a bath with her, come out the shower, she's smelling all different, fresh, she still smell good. Feel me? At that time, I used to collect panties. So I stole the panties that she had on and kept them with me in. For a long time, I could smell them panties and it smell fresh, man. Just like that powder, man. I can't remember the scent. It's a specific scent that always uses purple. If you remember what I'm talking about, put it in the comments. I forget what the scent is. Um, I want to say viola, but it's not fucking viola. It's just a purple color, and they always use this purple color with the scent. Um, but anyway, yeah, man. That, that must have been, that's like the cleanest pussy like ever, like. The clean, the cleanest shot of ass I ever got. Now, the weirdest, the weirdest shot of ass I ever got. Remember one time I was fucking with this girl. She was one of them chicks that know your friends. You know her friends. We all kind of hand together here and there. Some of our friends kind of fucking around, but we was never fucking around. And out of the blue, she ended up in my house waiting for somebody to come that never showed up. And we there watching TV, so we chilling. So, all right, we there chilling, and I don't even remember how exactly, but I was a little hot, I mean, a little hot button when I was in my prom, you know what I'm saying? So, we get into the mix, we get to doing it. This girl had the fattest ass, the biggest titties, like, she was one of them, one of them bodies, one of them young bodies. So, I'm there with her sucking on the titties, feeling on the ass, got my finger all in the pussy, everything is a go. It's hard breathing, moaning, all that, it's a go. Pussy wet as shit, like. My middle finger and the pussy, but yet and still the palm of my hand is wet. You feel me? That pussy is ready to go. So now I pull my dick out, I pull a condom on, kissing all over her neck, on her shoulders, sucking on the titties, kissing up above her nipples and shit. You know, I'm doing it. I'm doing the damn thing. Grinding on her. I got my dick between her legs, grinding on her pussy with my hard dick, but I ain't sticking my dick in yet. So we get to that moment now, that final moment. So I take my dick. Start to slide the head in real slow. And the bitch makes a noise like, whoo I'm like, okay. It's a little out there, but okay. So I start going in now. Slide my dick in some more. She goes, whoo ooh. It's like crazy. And she starts like flittering and flutting around like a fish out of water. Like a whole body flittering. And I'm not even pumping that shit like I'm pumping and like nothing like that. I was just putting my dick in. I wasn't even doing nothing. It's not even an ego thing. She just get to flutting around like a fish out of water and shit. She goes, uh, uh, go stiff, hard like stiff. All her limbs and shit go stiff. And I'm not eating no pussy like everything goes stiff. And she just grabs onto me real fast, like real tight. Uh, uh. And I ain't even do nothing. She had bust a nut and told me to get off her. She was done. That was it. She got dressed and she left. I was hard the whole time she was getting dressed. I was hard walking into the door. I'm trying to be a gentleman about it. But shit. That's a real fucking story, yo. I think the kisses and the hugs and whatever had got her started before I got there with her. Like, she was done. Like, I don't know if she had it in her mind. She wasn't going to fuck me or something. And, but she was done. And for me, that's the weirdest fucking thing ever. Like, the weirdest. <laughs> like, real fucking talk, that was the weirdest one. Now, one of the best. No, in fact, I'm going to say one of the best for the last. I'm going to give you one of the worst. So, 
me and my man, Tom, we still in our early 20s. It's early enough that niggas still get together and they bring two girls over as friends and then I fuck the girlfriend, you fuck the other friend. And if we can get a foursome going on, we do that. If not, we might switch if we can do that. If not, we just get a chewy if we can't do that. If not, they got to go home type shit. So we all in the same room, my nigga. So I'm in the room with this bitch. Yeah, I call her a bitch because it's the way it works out. It's the way it breaks down. My man calls over two girls. I couldn't snag nothing that day. He calls over two girls. Now his girl comes over, nice size titties, nice little round, bu- round booty. She brown skin. I still remember her face because I ended up fucking her later on. But that's another story. But anyway, she comes over. She comes in. Her girlfriend's on the way. Her girlfriend's cool. I'm like, her girlfriend, I'm like, bet. Bet. Me and my man, this time we got like a little with them little supermarket bags. We got one of them full of like two or three hundred condoms. So I'm like, bet. Bet. So we there chilling. My man getting a hand job. The girl don't give a fuck. She like, no, nah, my girl down too. My girl down. Girl start giving my man a little chewy. I'm watching all this shit. I try to touch her in the ass, and she takes my hand. You know how you, a girl grabs your hand, moves you away all hard, and then lets you go. She like she moves you away hard, and then lets you go all hard. Like in other ways, it's like don't touch. But she don't stop sucking my man dick the whole time. So my man looks at me with the ooh face and start laughing and shit. So just in the middle of that shit, my man don't bust nut yet, but her girlfriend's here. Doom, doom, the doorbell rings. So she go down to the door. I'm gonna go let her in because I'm gonna set the mood on. So I'm like, bet. I walk her to the steps. She go down to the door. She going to let her girlfriend in. I go back in the room. My man's real fast. Like, yo, it's about to go down. It's about to go down. You know what I mean? My man in his boxes, he was getting a chewy. Like, if you called your girlfriend and she know what's up, it's about to go down. Feel me? The girl comes upstairs. My girlfriend comes up a little bit behind her. It's a fat bitch. A big fat bitch. I'm like, oh, no, it's a fat bitch. Yo, yo, it was a fat bitch. It was a fat bitch, y'all. And I'm talking about it at this time. I didn't do fat girls at all. It was a fat bitch, y'all. I'm like, oh, no, are you kidding me? Instantly, my man starts laughing. <laughs> he started laughing, but the way he dropped it, it's like he's playing with the short and he's laughing at her, but he was laughing at me. It's my man, so I know what it is. He was laughing at me. So anyhow... The shorty comes in, they playing, but she pretty much goes right back to sucking his dick. Like, there's no pause up here. Like, it's on. So, a girlfriend comes sitting on the bed now. How are you doing? I don't remember the bitch name, but we going to call her Too Much Isha. She goes, ah, how you doing? I'm Too Much Isha. What's up with you? I'm just popping in here. You know, pull your dick out. So, I pull my dick out. She gives me a little chewy. I'm like, hold up. On a condom, get a laying down. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna take one for the team. I mean, my man, he can go and he can get his. By now, he fucking, huh, huh, huh. That's what's going on over there. The, the smell of pussy all in the room. You know I'm saying, I'm like, all right. I think I'm like, all right. I'm gonna fuck this fat bitch. I'm gonna look at that bitch. And imagine that I'm fucking that bitch. See if we can get a switch. We're going on. Feel me? All right. The shorty takes off her panties. Be cool. Takes off her top. Titties come out. Be cool. So I'm like, all right. Do a little titty fuck. She gives me a little chewy with the titty fuck. I'm there between her. You know what I mean? And she's trying to show her girlfriend up. So I'm getting the sound effects going on with our shit. You know what I'm saying? So we over here and my dick between the titties. And all you hear is. You know what I mean? She's trying to play her girlfriend out. Dig me? So her girlfriend started matching that sound. Hold up, bitch. She starts. So me and my man looking at each other, high fives going on. You know what I'm saying? So all right, girlfriend go back to fucking and shit. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna fuck this fat bitch. Fuck it, I'm gonna fuck the fat bitch. She gave me a mean blow job. I ain't coming yet. I'm gonna fuck the fat bitch. So I turn her over, pull her panties down. I'm saying I did say panties down, but it wasn't down yet. I was too far ahead of myself. But now I pull her panties down. She took her jeans off first. Was in the panties. Pull her panties down. Open up her butt. Everything from the back. Everything good so far. I'm a dick in. I ain't gonna lie. Feels good. Feels good. I'm in there. Stroking. I'm in there. I'm stroking. Stroking. Ugh. Starting to get the little tingle like. 
I'm feeling it. So I pull my dick out now to turn her around. Like, all right, fat bitch can get it. And she starts turning around and suddenly it's this real fucking fucked up smell. This really fucked up smell. Like, this shit fucked up. Like, it's fucked up. I can't even describe it. It's like, it was just fucked up. Like, trash, juice, and real bad pussy, period, on his period. And it's just fucked up. I look down at my dick, the tip of my dick, man, on the condom. It's like blood, but it's dark. Like, bitch not cleaning her shit. Feel me? My man now turns like, mm. I don't know if him and the shorty was talking that he was with, but when he goes, mm, and I look over at them, they both had the uh face. Like, uh, like, what's that smell? Uh, face. So I'm like, uh. Now I got the got a dilemma. Do I continue and finish? Or do I stop this shit right now? And my dudes, I continued and finish because I didn't want to leave my man hanging. And to make it worse, I was going soft. So it took even longer to get anything done. Oh, it was horrible. And that, my peoples, is the worst sex encounter I ever had. I mean, it was so bad it taught me a lesson. Everything that I noticed about that fat girl, and even fat girls right now, is off limits to me. Like, everything I noticed, man, her nails was dirty. I learned that that mean a bitch don't wash her pussy. Uh, she was on her period. I must have just went off. And that mean you can't long dick no bitches when they period just went off. Cause sometimes you you can make that shit come on. Or you can squirt out the last little bits of what's up there that they might have missed or whatever the fuck. I don't know. And I also learned that that shit don't smell right, my niggas. It ain't right. It's viciously nasty. So I warn you niggas, take my heed. I warn you with that shit. True stuff. Story. Anyhow, one of the most surprising piece of ass. All right, so here you go. So it's my man's and shit. Me and him real cool. I'm saying we have been working together nine to five, regular nine to five. So we work together and shit. So we hang out of here and there. We was going to the bars and strip clubs, chilling. You know, you know, as a dude, you meet a dude. Y'all cool, y'all fucks with each other, so y'all hang out from time to time. So, we've been hanging out maybe four years by now like this. Over the four years, I met his mom and his sister and his cousin. So now, one night, his sister's keeping like a cookout slash sleepover. It's one of them joints. I'm still just young enough in my 20s that it's like a cookover slash sleepover. We gonna get fucked up party. So I go over there. And we get fucked up. I mean, this one of them nights, like, I don't even pop pills. And I had half an E-pill type shit. We was fucked up. So now by, like, 3, 4 in the morning, I'm like, fuck it. I'm staying the night. My man's fucked up. He can't drive me home. I wouldn't even have wanted them to because we he fucked up. Everybody's fucked up. Like, they moms is there. We grown, so they moms is there. Him, her and her boyfriend, they fucked up. We all fucked up. And at the time, they lived in, like, this big-ass house down north. So everybody had a little room or somewhere on the couch or somewhere where, like, you could lay down and sleep and be cool. Like, you weren't on the floor. You was on something soft and cushioned. You was cool. Feel me? So I'm laying down. Me and his sister got the smoking. She comes downstairs, and she got a Dutch, but she can't roll up, and everybody else is fucked up. Like, she passes other people before she gets to me, and I'm just drifting off. Like, I'm a, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just starting to drift off. I'm so nice, but I'm not fucked up that I'm out, but I'm just drifting off. Other motherfuckers is fucked up. They out. So the sister comes, asks me, hey, can you roll this up for me? I'm like, yeah, I can roll it up, yeah. Motherfucker sit down. I'm smoking. She's like, well, right, 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 nigga. You smoke? I'm smoking. We get locked up. Motherfucker, hold up. I got another one. Goes upstairs, comes down with another 20. Boom. Be down there. She gave me a nick first and some hot gravy. Roll that up. Smoke that shit. I'm rolling up two more Dutchies out of that for us to smoke. Long story short, before we even get to the third joint, the last joint, we get the fucking. Now we in there, we hump, fucking, hump, fucking. And all the time I'm thinking, what the fuck? I ain't see this pussy coming at all. 
This pussy came out of nowhere. But this some good shit. I ain't get no chewy or nothing. No hand job or nothing. But this pussy just came out of nowhere. It was literally like me smoking. I fingered a little bit. And she like, all right, come on. Pulls the jeans down. Start pulling my dick on. I like, fuck me. So I pulled my dick out and I'm fucking, I'm fucking her. Yeah, I'm fucking her. Doing a good job at it too. Like, putting that work in. She putting that work back on me. Like, we switched the position now. She on top. Like, she putting that work in. Pussy's like super, super wet. Like, I'm like, oh shit. Got me a super soaker head. So we gotta keep it quiet. Cause it's, it's like niggas in like the next room area sleep. And there ain't no door on the area. So it's like, you can hear if we make too much noise. So we in there. And it's like, we rubbing fucking. You know that fucking like, you can't. And get at it, you gotta just rub it in and get at it like just rubbing it in and you can hear pussy hair and dick hair grinding against each other. You know that sound that sound that I'm making with my beard, you know what I mean? That's all you getting, so it's going in like sparks flying and shit. And that pussy just extra super wet. And I'm saying I sit up with her on the couch, lay it back on the back, I'm getting on top, and she goes, mm, 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 and it's super wet. And my hand happened to be on the ass. And I noticed I could feel water like it's wetter than it's supposed to be. I looked down. She squirted on me. I had never been squirted on. I had heard about it. But at the time, I didn't even know what the fuck it was then. Because I had never been squirted on. I didn't know that's what the squirt was. I thought it was something that you see like a bitch bend down or bend over or whatever and let you see it. And you see it. I ain't never see it before. She squirted it all on me. And guess what? I was into that shit. It was wet. Made my dick hard as shit. Got the fucking, I bust the biggest fucking nut. Because like, mm, mm, I can't make no noise. I'm in the joint. Mm, mm. I'm talking about, I saw fucking stars, my nigga. If you a dude and you bust a nut, you see stars, you know what I'm talking about. You don't get that all the time. That's that shit where like, you was holding your breath. You don't want to make no noise. Like, you about to pass out. I see stars. My body trembling. My joints is ache like my joints is weak and shit I fall flat on her boom and fall flat on them big titties and rubbing on the titties made my dick hard again but I noticed that she has squirted all over me and my dudes if y'all know squirt is piss it's fucking piss but it was hot I liked it it was hot okay and that was the most surprising fuck I ever got cause I was surprised on who I got it from then I was surprised on what she shared with me. Because I, I figured that bitch is not sharing that with everybody. So I'm figuring maybe she was looking at me and heard me talk enough over the years. And I was kind of out there. So she figured she could share that with me. But literally she knew it ain't never happened to me before. It was my first time. And my dudes, I liked it. I don't care if you talk about me. Talk about me. I liked it. For real. Mm. It's bringing back memories. I liked it so much. Now I'm going to talk about one of the scariest. So one of the scariest pieces of ass I got in my life. Everything starts out normal. It's a little joint, a little younger than me. Um, I had this other friend I used to mess with. But we was cool, but we would fuck from time to time. She had moved out of her apartment. At the time, I had no apartment. So she moved out, and it was like 14 days left on the lease. But she had got a nice new place and wanted to get on there. So she was like, look. My place empty for the next two weeks. It's yours. Gives me the key. So I'm in and up out of there. Feel me? Smoking weed. I'm drinking. This is like the second apartment in my entire life. My first apartment I only had for like a year. So this is like the second apartment in my entire life. I'm looking for another apartment. I had this place. So I'm like, yo, I'm going to go there and chill. Feel me? So I go over there and I'm chilling and shit. Had another joint over there. Smashed maybe two, three drawers over there. My boys come over. They smash a little joint, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So now I get this one little joint, little Spanish joint to come through. I was trying to program. I've been trying to get at it for a minute. Like, I'm trying to get at it for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So she comes through now. This little this little joint is like a thug joint. Like, she sold drugs. Feel me? She talked gritty. And I think that's what I liked about it. She, was, she fucked with girls here and there. She was kind of tomboyish. And then when I got the pussy, she let me fuck in the ass and everything. And honestly speaking, she was the first shorty to let me fuck her in the butt. But she did, though, and I liked it on it. She was freaky, talk hard, and she, so anyway, she comes by, we there, she comes with a little, and it was Hennessy, too. She bought a little Hennessy, she sold she sold a little weed, so she had some weed, I had some weed, we smoked, we got nice up in that joint. We in there, we in the pitch dark and shit, feel me? I'm knocking it, bang, bang, I'm knocking it from the back, bang, bang, 
bang, I'm knocking it, bang, bang, bang. And like, you know how like you on a couch or something and your shit slides off and you can hear when everything is sliding off. So I'm hearing everything sliding off and suddenly I heard pow. The bitch had a gun. She had a, a, a 380 in her pocket, yo. That's how hood this bitch was. In her pocket. And when our jeans fell off the couch, whatever the fuck was up with her 380, it went off and shot a hole, not through just her jeans, but through my jeans too on the floor. Real shit. It was so close that it caught her jeans on fire a little bit. You know, like what well, some of y'all might not know. If you that close and bullet go through something and it's that close, it could ignite that shit. So it caught her jeans fire a little bit. But it was so close that I felt the breeze and the heat on my foot. Like, I had my foot on the floor position so I could anchor myself while I'm fucking her from the... She, I'm fucking her from the back. And, like, we on the couch. So, like, you know how you got one leg out and you standing on that one leg but the other leg is folded. And, you're like, you getting it in from the back. I'm hitting it, bang, bang, bang. So that shit goes off. She almost... The bitch almost shot me in my foot, yo. You know that fucked up the whole vibe. I'm keeping the hood 100, my nigga. I stopped, bitch. I stopped fucking and she stopped fucking. And we was chill. We smoked L and I sent that bitch home. Honest, that's a true story. I wasn't scared of her, but I ain't even seen that bitch ever since then. And that was like more than like 15 years ago that happened, yo. And I ain't even seen that bitch since then. That's a real fucking story. But it was scary because I'm in a place that really wasn't mine. She came there. It was supposed to just be me and her. I ain't see no gun. I ain't know she had no gun. That shit just went off. And what if that bitch had fucked me up in there? Would she have left me in there bleeding to my own devices, bleeding to death? Would she have helped me to the hospital? Like, what would have went down? Her shit was illegal. I'd have been fucked up. So, yeah, that was the scariest story. It was really short. There wasn't a whole lot of detail to that. That shit was just fucking scary. It was just like, pow. You know what I'm saying? That shit was fucking scary. In the empty apartment, it's just me and her. And the only sounds is you and somebody fucking. And y'all fucking hard, too? Man, I thought I was shot, my nigga. I thought her boyfriend had found me or some shit. Kicked in the door and had shot me, my nigga. That's really what I thought. Real rat. Now, I got another story for you. I'm going to tell you the most tiring sex story for me. The most tiring fucking story. So, here you go. I'm going to cut through the whole long story. I used to have a girlfriend. Me and her used to have girlfriends. Feel me? So when you're in a situation like that, y'all go out sometime and y'all pick up females or your female bring home chicks from wherever the fuck. But she's not going to bring you no slouch, bitch, because, you know, you her dude. And if y'all really with that, y'all play y'all play that game a certain way. So anyway, my female, my female girl at the time, she brought home another shorty with her like, it was a one night stand thing. The shorty already knew it was up. She prepped it to that shit and all. Dig me? But yo, we got in the room when we got to it, man. We got the drinking and smoking. We on here. You'll notice a lot of my interest and shit happens around drinking and smoking. But anyway, we get it in there. We in there. It's going down. It's music playing loud. It's like R. Kelly playing loud and shit. We in there. Ass is smacking. They eating pussy. I ain't eating no pussy in this situation at all, you know. But they eating pussy as like the lights is on type shit. We getting it in like spread eagle. It's in like dick in. She playing with my balls when I'm fucking. It's in. Yo, it's in, yo. And I bust like so many nuts till I reach a point that I'm sweating. They sweating. But yo, shorty was a beast. She was a monster beast, yo. When I bust and I was soft. She had, she made my girl eat her pussy like she was on that busting nut and just wanted more. When I got back hard, she gave me head, turned around and was just throwing that fat booty on me. Yo, she had me fucking and my girl eating her pussy at the same time like some porno shit. We bought her there for our pleasure. She had us for her pleasure. And yo, that was the most tiring. Listen, man, it was one of them things and this like real talk. Seth don't lie on his dick. When we was done, man, I fell asleep before them bitches. They was still fucking when I went to sleep. I woke up and they would just sleep across me. Ass naked sleep. Lights on, music still playing, everything. Ass naked just sleep. That was the most tiring situation I ever been in, my dudes. The most tiring story of my life. Seriously. That shit really went down. I wish I could have these females on here to tell a story with a false name or something. 
so y'all can see sex ain't lying on his dick. This some real shit. And I view females and sex all different because it gotta be, you gotta view it different because if you a real nigga and you get out there, real shit goes down for you. Now I got a few more like the best, you ain't even get the best, but I'm gonna leave that for part two. You got one of the bravest, one of the oldest women I've been with, one of the most dangerous. Yo, I got a couple other joints I'm gonna tell you, but I'm gonna save that for part two. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna knock that out right now. This is Seth's videos. This is a Seth's video show. Thanks for listening. I hope you were entertained. I hope I made some pussies wet out there with my story. I hope I got some dick hards and I got you to get laid on some good shit, not no homo shit. And I mean, if you gay and it turns you on and you wouldn't fuck your dude, do you? I'm not gay, but do you? You know what I'm saying? I'm not a hater. I want everybody to bust a nut, feel me? But anyway, this is Seth's videos. Like on a video, because when you like on a video, it tells YouTube that this video was good. Other people going to find it entertaining and put it out there in the, in the forefront so people can find it. Subscribe to my page, because when you subscribe, you're basically adding me to like your friends list. Feel me? So whenever you're talking about me, you thinking about something I talked about, you want to show somebody who I am, show somebody a show, you can find me in that subscription box. Feel me? All the people you subscribe to, you can see it. I come up in your feed. When I put uh, put something up, it shows up in your feed, so you know. So subscribe. Feel me? Push that bell icon. The bell icon kind of new, but the bell icon will give you an indication on your phone and computer and your watch on your laptop, whatever. It'll give you an indication and notification so you know I just up uploaded something brand new for you to check out. Feel me? Don't forget, do those things. It's an honest brother on the honest, honest hustle, and I do this for the money. I ain't going to sell you no dreams. If I'm telling you news, if I'm telling you a point of view, it might be good or bad, whatever you might take it as, I'll do this for the money. So like and subscribe, repost so them views, go up there, suggest it to your friends so they check it out. This is Seth's videos, and I'm out.